All right, I'm going to do something a little bit different today. Um, working on a project here. This is going to be the new backdrop for doing chalk talks. Talk more about that later. But I thought just as something different, I'd show a little bit of actually how doing a little bit of the construction work behind this thing. I'm going to cut some boards and whatever else and attach this thing to a sort of a temporary easel, if you will, here on this wall. So I thought, why not record it? And I can talk about some other things while working. Um, this thing here, you can see it's kind of a sort of particle board or whatever. Um, drawing on plywood is tricky because you have the wood grain and things. And basically this is going to be, it's, it's standing upright now, but it's going to be turned on its side. It's cut to six feet wide because I don't really need eight feet in width. Uh, I don't think so for doing the chalk talks and whatever. So I thought I'd get a, a piece of this and just see it's three quarter inch. This stuff's so heavy, it's incredible. It's heavier than regular plywood, but uh, carrying it upstairs was kind of tricky, but we got it up. But uh, definitely don't want to get this stuff exposed to moisture, too, because it just gets, it swells, and then it just crumbles. Um, but I thought it's a good smooth surface. should be pretty good for drawing. And over here, I have a roll of paper. I think it's about... I don't know if it even says it here. I think it's 50 feet or something like that. It's four feet wide and then a roll of 50 foot long white paper that'll be used for it. So I need a place where I can do that and I can't exactly do that over on the other wall. The normal wall with the uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17 scripture is right over that way. This wall here, I have the Bible banner up and you can see how the it slopes down here. Um, this is a story and a half place here in Bridgewater where we have. And so uh, not a huge amount of room. My office, my desk is over here and, and everything else. You can kind of just barely see right here. This is the uh, DVD duplicating tower we have. It does 10 at a time. The one master, and then it used to do 11, but one of the drives broke. But another issue. But uh, so I'm going to get this thing out of the way. And then I'm going to build a frame. Like I said, I before we get to our new location, I need to start experimenting with doing chalk talks because that's going to be a big part of the future of this ministry. I've had that burden now for a long time. I'm off camera here. Just give me a minute. Got a bunch of eight foot two by fours, nominal boards. They're actually one and a half by three and a half, but that's something else. But uh, I've had a burden for a long time to do chalk talks because not only because I learned a lot from uh, Peter Ruckman that way, the artist who drew this, if you don't know who he is, um, but also my grandfather, uh, Milton Denlinger, was a chalk talk artist. So, uh, and what he would do is when you're doing chalk talks and things, your hands get all defiled from the chalk because you use your fingers actually to blend some of it in. And so what he would do is uh, he would actually be doing the chalk talk and he'd be doing the preaching but my grandmother would be up there this is long before i was born um she'd be up there and she would read the bible he'd say okay read verse so and so or whatever else and she'd be there reading the bible so i might eventually end up having my wife Catherine, come along and she'll be standing off to the side while i'm doing the drawing and she can read the bible we've done that in some studies anyhow but this banner here has to come down and basically I'm going to be moving it over this way. Uh, we'll see how everything works out. I, I don't know. I don't do a lot of uh, blueprints or, or designing or whatever else. I just kind of, well, let me put this up and see if it works here. And if it doesn't, well, okay, then try it someplace else. I've always kind of been that way. But um, So what I'm going to start out doing here after the wall is clean and clear now of everything that was on it, Kind of drape this banner over the, my chair there. Uh, I'm not sure. You can kind of see the light switch, you know. See if I can get my finger to point to it over there, right there. <laughs> uh, you can kind of see the light switch. But uh, I'll probably put the banner over to the side there. And I'm going to have to kind of situate it over this way a little bit farther. I don't even know if this is going to work. I've measured it. There's about eight feet here to the door. But... It's iffy. Um, so uh, I'm going to cut an eight foot board into 
just cut it right in half. It doesn't have to be really anything super special here as far as real square or real perfect construction here. So just take my tape measure, about a line at four feet, and you can build a lot of stuff when you learn how to work with wood. I don't have a, so many of my tools are down at our, our property right now, so just use a Bible for a straight edge. It's a good thing to do. And then I'm going to use just a saw here. I have power saws and everything, but this this is an old saw. It's a Japanese saw. Um, I mean, the, the name's pretty much worn off of it over the years. But uh, I've had this thing for over 20 years. Used to have, I had this little eye hook thing there on, or eye screw there on the end of it. And I'd have it hanging on the wall by my wood lathe. And then if I had a spindle that needed to be parted off, I would just take this and, and cut it, you know. So, but these are amazing saws. I think they call them razor saws today or whatever, but I don't know if they were calling them razor saws back when I bought this thing many years ago. But it's really neat. It has this, not intending to do a saw review here, but it has this little screw that you screw out here. And then the blade actually will come out. I'm not going to do it, but you can actually replace the blade in the handle. And um, very, very aggressive teeth pattern there. Uh, you know, cuts, you can see some are busted. But um, cuts on the pull stroke. But these things are just amazing. So let me cut here for just a minute. It's fairly cold up here right now. It's, we don't heat this room. There goes the roll of paper. Hold that over there so it doesn't fall. So, all right, that does it for that. Makes a fairly clean cut. You can see it there. Pretty clean, not too bad. Now what I'm gonna do is I gotta screw this to the wall, kind of up here. I'm gonna put a four foot board up here, kind of higher like this. And I'm gonna have a board on the floor and then I'm gonna put boards on the ends of it coming down. And then that way it'll give me the angle I need. I'll move the board on the floor, which, whichever way I need it to go. So I have a slight angle. You don't want it to be perfectly straight, that board there. I couldn't just screw it to this wall, in other words. So I'm gonna put this board up top, board on the floor, and then I'm gonna put two by fours on the end of it, uh, and then a two by four across to set that thing on. So we'll see how it goes. But normally, in this situation, you would use a stud finder to try and you know find where the, you know, if just imagine this, here like that, in here, you know, every 16 inches in most house construction that's been done in the last 100 years. It's been kind of a standard, you know, 16 inch centers on your studs. But with me, I don't, I, I don't even know where my stud finder's at right now. So many of my tools are packed up. So more than likely, I'm just gonna run some screws into it. And you can tell sometimes, if you look at drywall, like right there's a screw head that they didn't really get all that, you know, puttied in all that well. And uh, which is kind of nice if you're trying to do work like I'm doing here. Here's another one. So there you see your 16 inches right there to there. And so you can kind of look at that and kind of eyeball it and get it close enough. This house is so old and everything, you know. There goes the roll of paper. So uh, just keep talking here. I'm gonna find a good battery. Cordless drills are very, very nice. I don't know where my drill is right now. This is an impact driver. Uh, use it quite a bit. So, and then what I'm gonna do too, by the way, um, when I have the board up, I'm gonna try this. I got these clamps here. They're really, really good tension on them things. And I'm gonna be putting the paper on and then this, these will go on the end, you know, so they'll keep the paper nice and tight for when I'm drawing. Hopefully everything will work out. 
and uh, you know this I'm doing this video just as kind of an interesting thing you don't have to watch if you don't want to um, it's not required you won't go to hell if you don't watch it yeah it seems like people like to do that with me anything I say that you know as a sin or was a wicked or whatever they'll just instantly make it into a salvation issue issue and it's uh, very seldom am I trying to make it into that kind of an issue but uh, there's some desperate liars out there that don't like me very much, so whatever. But um, another reason I'm doing this is for young men out there to, to see that uh, it's good to learn some of these skills. You know, I'm trying to be gentle with this box. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't be. So, just a box. These screws are really neat. I've been, I was always kind of, a, I like to use Phillips type of screws, drywall screws and whatever else if I'm doing interior work because they're fairly cheap and whatever. But I really like these, these newer style screws like this. They're um, kind of the Torx head thing or whatever, but they work really, really well. So uh, that's what I use a lot of times. So now let me see if I can get this thing. I mean, I'm not even going to bother trying to level this thing or anything else because it's just, it's literally just a frame to hold that big board up that I showed earlier and uh, just so I can put a piece of paper on it and draw on the piece of paper. That's all it is. And, I'm, you know, it's really bright and sunny out right now. That's why I got a lot of lighting in here and you got the reflection on my glasses. So, all right, I just hold it down here. Uh, where do I want this thing? Probably, yeah, probably right about there. So I'll just kind of guesstimate here a little bit. You just take a screw and you poke it in the wood there so you can get a mark. And then you just start your, I should be showing this, you just take the Again, if, you're, if you want to build something as a young man and you don't know how to do things like this, you just find your mark there and you can just take the screw and you can just kind of push hard with it like that and you make the little mark right there and then that tells you. Or you can use a pencil if you have a pencil. There's all kinds of little things that you can do that you'll learn uh, when you do this type of thing. And then you just want to start the screw. You don't want to start drilling it through there because if the screw's the whole way through and then you try to put it into the wall that way, when it eventually grabs, it's just going to pull the screw right down into the wood and then it's going to be impossible to take it off because it's not good. So that's what you do there. And then let me just mark two other screws here. Actually, I could just do one other screw. I don't have to do all three of them. Again, I'm using these wonderful uh, screw heads that the previous owner did not really cover over all that well. There's another mark. put this in and like I said this is uh, this is not indicative of the type of work that I normally do okay I usually have a little bit more careful than this but uh, with this setup here it really doesn't matter that much not real important in other words that looks about good again sighting off of the screw head here behind the drywall behind the paint I should say Good. I got it. And if you want to be, I was going to, I don't have my level in here, but normally you would take a, a bubble level and you would put it on here on the bottom or up on the top if you can reach there and make sure it's leveled this way. You know, you get the little bubble in the middle if you don't know about those things. Another way to do it, just to make it look pleasing to the eye, is measure from the top of the two by four up. So you got nine and a quarter on that side way down here and that looks about right yep yeah right about there so that one doesn't feel like it hit all that great so I'm going to put another one in down here
that's better. And I'll just grab another one. And this, this really isn't even, you know, another thing you have to learn when you get into building types of things like this is it structural. Is it really gonna have a lot of weight on it? And the answer is not really, because the boards I'm gonna be putting on here are gonna be angled down. So the vast majority of the weight from the board when I put it on here for the chalk talk thing, the vast majority of the weight is going to be pushing in towards the wall and down. So this isn't really gonna have a whole lot of stress on it because the boards will be screwed in there and going down to touch the ground. So they'll support that. So it's not really important to make this really, really, really strong up here. Let me put one more screw in just for safety or extra strength. Good. I mean, this, you know, again, a lot of people might say, well, what's the point of showing all this? Well, this was a big part of my life for a long time. Still is actually, because I still do a lot of work like this type of work. So, let me just get this thing out of the way. I got a little piece there that didn't get it snapped off when I was cutting. So let me just finish that off. Okay, that gets that. Um, you get another board or two here. Uh, just by way of news, I'll tell you, tell you about this. Um, our Chevy Tracker uh, is fixed. Um, I realized I made a very bad mistake with the thing. And uh, I'll probably make a little video just to explain things. And uh, so it's all, everything's better there and everything else. Okay, see, eight feet is not going to happen. I mean, it'd be angled like that that's not going to work so um hmm I'm trying to think here i just have to use my tape measure and i know how you know everybody on youtube likes to judge and there everybody's a professional with things and whatever else but just remember this is not uh okay seven feet if i cut it off about seven feet i think That'd be good. Maybe a little bit less than that. I'll say 83 inches. This is not um, professional carpentry. And you, you say, I'd like to see you build a house. I'm building a, a cheap frame here. All right. But I know how people are. You know, you see some guy and he's reviewing a snow shovel on YouTube and everybody in the comments going, you know, yeah, I'd like to see him do a, you know, 16 inches of wet snow or something with that shovel well obviously you know some people just uh like to complain about everything so let me measure this off here quick another thing you can use for a good straight edge is right there so what you would do just to show you Again, for young men that have never learned to really work with wood or anything. There's so much neat stuff you can do with woodworking. Uh, how do I show this? My line's right there. This is not the way you want to do things. You want to use a, a little tri-square or something, you know, um, to get it really good. But again, this isn't really important. But just to get a good, a good line that I can saw with. So you just use a straight edge like that. Now I can see where I need to saw right here, see? And um, I'll try to demonstrate a little bit here of what I mean by pull stroke saw. Uh, only the finest here, I mean, this is, take it for what it's worth. All right, so you get on the line there and uh, just lightly start to kind of pull back against it like that. I'm not going to be able to do this like that. I'm just going to have to saw it down here. I need it to be able to sit on something, but you see what I'm saying. But uh, has some exciting videos coming out. Let me cut through this quick.
There we go. Have some exciting videos coming out. <laughs> Just got done actually rendering one this morning, editing and rendering one on Sheffy with a little bit of a surprise. Very interesting surprise. That's all I'll say about that. And uh, so that should be a lot of fun. And, uh, and I have a couple more coming out. Going to be doing some stuff uh, showing some of the old time preachers. Some people, younger viewers or newly saved, might not be aware of some of the old time preachers. And I'll be bringing some of that stuff out too. So, but there's what we want. As you can see there, you can't really see because you're looking this way, but I don't want the thing sticking way out this way, you know, angled out this way, in other words, to show you that way. I want it angled not perfectly straight up and down like this, perfectly vertical. I want a little bit of an angle to it so that when the, the big board is on there, then I can stand and draw on that, you know. And, of course, if it's angled back to the big board will, you know, naturally lean back its weight will be back and I don't want to put any fasteners on the board. That's another thing. I don't want to have any fasteners through the face of it because then that's a little spot, a little screw head or whatever else, where if I'm drawing, it'll poke through the paper there. So good. There we go. That's one. Now I have to do number two, the second board. <laughs> you have to clarify that one. So let me grab another two by four. It's kind of funny. I made a little comment about the two by four. It's actually one and a half by three and a half. It's called nominal. And the reason I said that is because uh, that's something that's changed. A lot of people don't even realize it. But back in the past, they would actually use two inch by four inch lumber. And the growth rings were really, really tight. Just give you a little forestry lesson here real quickly. Uh, if you don't know, this darker ring right here is called late wood, right? This is what grows in the wintertime, or that's the kind of, you know, yeah, it grow, grows in the wintertime, I guess would be the right way to say it. The light wood there, this lighter part of the ring, their growth ring, is uh, what grows in the summer. So it's a lot bigger than the little dark line. So when you look at the end of a board, you can see how bad the winter was as opposed to how much growing in the summer there was and if you ever look at old growth timber these growth rings are so tight they're sixteenth of an inch sometimes I mean really 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 tight and when a tree grows slower it will actually get a lot stronger I've grown, worked with old growth pine um, that just had these real tight little growth rings real, real tight together because see, it's a it's a big, you know, canopy there with the uh, the forest canopy, so to speak. If you know all the trees, it's really really tight. It's really dark. They're not getting a lot of sunlight, and they just grow very 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 slowly. And the wood, like I said, I worked with some. It's almost as strong as oak, old growth pine. And this house, it's pretty neat. This house was built in 1930, and it actually has in the walls. When I was doing some work downstairs in the bathroom, it actually has real two inch wide by four inch wide uh, studs in it. And you look at them and they are old growth pine. They have real tight growth rings. So uh, when we tear this place down, I'm going to be tearing it down piece by piece and we're going to make sure we get all the lumber out of this place. There's a lot of it. And uh, we're discovering that as we're building too. It's another thing, uh, if you're dreaming of building your own place or whatever, another thing you're going to realize is uh, the cost of building a house today is just crazy, absolutely crazy. And the quality of wood has severely diminished over the years. So kind of an interesting thing. And there's actually people around the country that are starting to realize this and they're starting to actually deconstruct old houses and get the old lumber out. And, uh, you know, and you can build a much better house with old growth timber, much, much stronger. That's why the old houses will stand for, you know, a long, long time. And uh, newer ones just tend to fall down. All right, 83 inches. Let 
But you know, it doesn't take a whole lot of money to get into woodworking, by the way, into carpentry. You can buy tools and things. I forget what these saws cost uh, many years ago. They're not cheap because they are really, really high quality. Um, I mean, it's from Japan. They're, they're really good saws. But, you know, I've had it for over 20 years. And I've never sharpened it either, by the way. And this thing has sawed just about any type of wood you can imagine. I mean, exotic hardwoods from different countries, Purple Heart, Ebony, you know, uh, Coca-Bola, all kinds of woods like that. And it's still sharp, very sharp. I mean, I busted a tooth off right there. I broke a tooth off. But uh, sharpening these things is not real fun from what I've heard. They have these little, real thin little files and you got to get in there and stuff. And then you have to set the teeth, set them, you know, the right distance apart so that you're not snapping them off and things and they cut correctly and also pull the shavings out. There's so many neat things that you can learn. <laughs> uh, don't waste your time on video games. Okay, I certainly did in the past. I've wasted a lot of time in whatever else, but uh, Lord's designed some really fascinating things, not just in nature, but just with all different types of hand skills and whatever. I mean, remember the Lord Jesus Christ was a carpenter for 30 years. It's the kind of stuff he did, you know, sawing boards, measuring things, cutting stuff, building things, whatever else. It's great. It gives you a feeling of accomplishment. And I'd like to encourage you to do that if you're a young man. All right. It's a great thing. So, let me get to saw on this next board. I realize I should have multiple camera angles and whatever else, but... You know, to make it more interesting, I'm saying, but I just want to get it done. Okay. It's nice too when you when you use hand tools because you don't need any kind of ear, hearing protection and you're not breathing in all the dust from the saw just throwing it up in the air. Um, it's a lot more restful. Oh boy. That's going to be close. There's actually an old floor vent right here on the floor. You can't see it from there, but old floor vent on the floor. Uh, now I have to figure out the the angle here. I guess it's just going to be kind of tried out and I can move it if I need to. That probably is pretty good right there. Now, what do you do? Well, I'm going to need to be able to move it. So eventually I'm going to need to have two screws like this going in through the top of the board in this way into the support board. But I don't want to put two screws in right now because then if I have to move it, it's going to not want to move too much because it's screwed in twice up there. But if you put one screw in, then it acts like it's kind of an axis and I can move it a little bit. Now, I'm not going to be able to move it, have free range of movement, but I'm just going to kind of get it close here. Make sure it's fairly square there. I don't want too much of an angle. That should probably do it right there. And then I'm just going to run a screw right into the end here. Don't make it too tight. That should be good. Come over here. If you don't know why, if you're new to tools and things and you don't know why it makes that kind of noise, it kind of the, it kind of, Sort of like a hammer drill, it just kind of da -da 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 like that. It's designed that way and it gets kind of, it'll torque it in a little bit better. Kind of like a, a ratchet with a socket on it, you know. Rather than just turning it in by hand, it just kind of ratchets it in. Okay, there, done. Now all I gotta do is just put this board here, the other half of the uh, eight foot two by four, can you see it? There you can see it. I'll put this down at the bottom, laid flat like this, with these two boards here coming down on either end. You gotta get them apart from each other, like that. 
and like that. Now here, uh, here's where it'd be nice again to have level. It looks actually pretty good according to the camera. I can see that the spacing here, it looks fairly consistent and also over there. But here would be nice to have a level again because you put it on here to make sure it's plumb. In other words, level is this way, the horizontal plumb is vertical. So it's, it's again, you're not even gonna see any of this stuff when the board's up and I got paper on there and I'm drawing. But just to be, you know, good about the thing, I guess. Let me run some screws in down here at the bottom. Uh, I'll just put one in for now. Because again, I want it to still want it to move a little bit if I need it to move. Good. So, there we go. Now, what I'm going to do, uh, hmm. Now I got to think if I want to cut this other, I have one more two by four to do. I have a whole huge list of, of chalk talks that I want to do. So uh, a lot of our plans for when we have our ministry office updated, uh, I'm going to be actually doing some really detailed doctrinal studies um, that are going to be, you know, many hours in length, really covering all the scriptures, a lot more thorough than I can do online here with YouTube. And I'm going to be using the chalk talk as the way to really draw things out and whatever else. It's going to be really detailed. But uh, there's even just regular sermons I want to do that it's going to be better for me to actually draw what I'm trying to say than just to preach it so people can understand through seeing it in front of their face. Uh, but, you know, i got to get my system worked out before we move to the new place because uh, if this type of board doesn't work, well, then I need to try something else. If the setup isn't too good or the angle's not right or whatever else. So that's what I'm doing right now. I think I'm going to cut this thing. Come on here. If I do eight feet, I think it's going to be a bit too long. So I think I'm going to cut it at six feet. Well, maybe I'll... I don't know. Hmm. I'm going to do six feet four inches, 76 inches in other words. Because my thought is I'd like to have a little bit sticking out past the edges of the board so that it has a little bit of room. It's, it's not going to matter a whole lot. <laughs> this is the kind of thought process that goes on up here. You know what I mean? If you're into woodworking. And you don't do a whole lot of blueprints or whatever. You just kind of go with it and see, you know, design it as you go. And, it, you know, you can't build a house that way or whatever else. I understand some people can, I guess I should say. But if it's something really detailed, well, you might have to sit down and draw out a design, sketch out something. But if it's just kind of a, eh, you know, something like this that's not really all that important, well, you know, you can get by with just, just, uh, kind of eyeballing things and whatever but let me let me cut this board here real quick be right back with you <laughs> Not always easy sawing things without saw horses. I mean, really precision here. You know, I'm, I'm sawing a board. Ah, come on.
Okay, there we go. There's a little nub there I need to cut off. Clean up the sawdust later. But what happens is, again, if you're young and you don't know this, what happens is when you cut your board, it starts out, I can't really show this too good, but it starts out kind of straight like that. But as you're cutting, it starts to pinch like this. I'm going to exaggerate a little bit. And so it'll start to pinch against your blade because you're removing material there. So you got to lift up on the board and keep it straight so your, your saw kerf stays open. And of course, if it starts to do the opposite, where your board's like this, and it starts to go like that, what can happen is it can snap off too early. So, just another little interesting thing there. Now the tricky part is going to be, now I gotta see the field of, of view. Okay, again, looking at my camera and saying, all right, where do I need to have this thing at so that this two by four thing is off you know, camera, so to speak, and I need to be able to have the board with the chalk talk thing on it. Where's that going to go? So, um, probably right about there, I would imagine. Let me get my pencil. I need to be able to, where are we at here? There, down, probably right about there, I imagine. Just draw a little line on on top of this and on top of the 2x4 going up that way, or on the 2x4, so that I can see where I need to run the screw in at. All right. Then you just, again, we're not doing, making precision work here. Just a quick little frame to mount the board on. And uh, just put a mark right there so I know where to put my screw at, so I can run a screw in here. Okay, then I'll just put this thing up here again. You know what I'm going to do. I think that I got my angle right. So what I'm going to do is the board that's on the floor, I'm going to run a screw down through the floor or through the board into the floor. Really concerned about the overall look of the place here, you know. Uh, I'm going to do that just so it's not going to move on me. Good. Now I'm going to put this board on, get it in line with my line here, run a screw in, like that. Again, you got to make sure you don't go too deep because if you do, the wood essentially, if you go too deep with one of these screws, the wood will essentially kind of go back in like this. And then when you go to back it out, it'll pull the whole board out, not just the screw. So, little interesting thing there. But again, here's another case where a level would be nice, but we're just uh, throwing this thing together quick as an experiment to see if that type of wood works. And so what we'll do, if you don't have a level, well, you can at least measure off the floor. So bring up your two by four where it looks like it's fairly level. Measure from the floor up to the top, which we have, come on. This is an old tape measure. I got many, many years ago as a teenager, 29 inches. And uh, it's an old Lufkin. And uh, had it all these years. And it's a nice little one for your pocket. You know, go to lumber yard, you can measure things. But it's flimsy, very flimsy. So I'm at 29 inches up. So I can get this at least the same on both sides. Right there. So at least it's pretty close to being level. Okay, there's that. I'm gonna put two more in because this board weighs a lot. And that should do it then. And I'll try out the board and we'll see how it looks. I might have to put a screw up at the top of the board. I don't know yet. Yeah. 
and put another one here. Okay, got it pretty good. Now for the moment of truth. Now we're going to see if the board actually will fit on here, what it'll look like. Let me get my tape measure up. Turn that light on, maybe that'll help a little bit. So, uh, starting to get a little warm now. It's 52 degrees in here when I started, but when you're starting to work, you know, and you're, <laughs> especially when you use hand tools, that's another beautiful thing about hand tools. You know, a lot of the old time guys, they worked in barns and buildings that were not really heated. And you think, wow, it must've been so cold. Not really. <laughs> when you're using hand saws and hand tools and things, you generate your own heat. But uh, I guess you just got to make sure you have proper nutrition so that you have fuel for your uh, power saw. You know what I mean? But, uh, all right, let's see if we can get this big old thing up here. I'm going to do this without pinching my fingers. Ugh. This particle board is so stinking heavy. I remember years ago helping out a friend of the family that actually had a, um, a big hutch that was, that was made completely out of particle board. Why on earth would you do a thing like that? I have no idea, but the thing was made completely out of particle board and, uh, and my word, that thing was so heavy. I mean, I've moved wood stoves that felt lighter than that thing, but okay. How's it look? I think down here's the bottom. And, you know, of course, I'm going to adjust the camera in and out and whatever else, too, because you can see some of the top there, but maybe that's not real important. And, of course, you got that corner over there, which is kind of a little bit goofy, but I'm goofy, too, so it kind of works out. Um, but, yeah, looks eh, maybe not totally solid, but uh, I might actually put a little screw up in here and one over there. I got it centered pretty good right now, a little bit this way. That's actually pretty good. I, yeah, you can kind of see the light switch over there. I don't know if I'll maybe put this banner <clears throat> over here, maybe like that. I don't know. That might kind of work. Of course, I guess it's not a real big deal if you see a light switch. So. But I think that's gonna work. Yeah, it's. I don't think that's gonna work. Yeah, if I'm drawing on here. Okay, probably not. Um, yeah, let me just put two screws in. This stuff's kind of weird too. I should probably pre-drill a hole, but I don't think it's going to chip it out too bad. Man, that thing's noisy. All right, one on this side. And there it is. Uh, still moves a little bit at the bottom. Yeah, I'm gonna have to put something at the bottom. <laughs> so I should have probably sent off to Harvard and had a study done on this engineers and whatever else that they could tell me exactly the right angle and everything. Give me a, you know, I probably should have had an architecture, um, an architect, not architecture, an architect tell me exactly what needed to be done here or something. It's probably dangerous or something like that for me to do this on my own. And one more screw over here. There you go. Blowing the dust off if you don't know what I'm doing there. Okay. What do you think? 
looks pretty good. Now the other issue is going to be, I can set up one of my studio lights this way to light it this way, but over there is my desk on that side with all that stuff sitting on it. So, hmm, that might be tricky. Uh, not sure yet what I'm going to do on that, but uh, now one last thing I'll do here. I will open up my uh, I know I've got a knife. Probably people are scared. Some of my enemies probably are, but <laughs> pocket knife. Sam so probably, you know, try to get me in trouble with the law or something, I guess, because I have a knife or something like that, you know. People come up with all kinds of weird stuff. I know some of you send me things, you know, that people are saying about me or whatever else, and a lot of times I just shake my head. You know, I say to my wife, I say, guess what they're saying now, honey? <laughs> oh, it's fun. Um, there we go. So that's empty. Now, the trick is going to be how do I get this thing? I wonder if it's the first time I've actually seen this paper. It looks like it's fairly good. It's That's nice and thick. Um, should be good for drawing, I think. I was a little bit worried about that. I thought, is it going to be, you know, like tissue paper or something? But it, from what I'm seeing, it looks like it's pretty good stuff which is good. Like I said, I was a little bit worried it was going to be real thin and just not good for doing chalk talks. Uh, now I got to get these clamps. We'll see if we can do this. Then you'll be seeing this coming out here and I'll be having a chalk talk or two of this coming up soon. Let me stick one up here at the top. And then things are strong clamps. Did I get that? Yeah, I got it in my back there. All right. Stay. Don't move. Got eight of them, so I can put uh, one up at the top, one at the bottom. And then uh, one in here, one in there, try to keep the thing kind of level. And get it over to the edge, and then I can just cut it off over there. There, and... There, clamps are pretty cheap. They were a dollar forty-nine each at our local store here called Martin's. So that was a pretty good deal. Get that thing up there like that. And now, I'm get my knife out again. You just take it has a little pocket snag thing. You can open it, but I'll just do it that way. And I'll just cut this thing off. Like that. I'll take the paper and put it right here. Now I gotta get the clamps. I'll put one up here. Man. Can't get over how strong the springs are on these things. I thought they were just going to be cheap little, you know, made in China pieces of junk or something, but they're actually pretty good. Of course, I just, this is the first time I'm using them, so I guess I should be quiet until they've had some time to prove themselves, so to speak. And two more. One right there. It felt like a lighter spring pressure. This one feels heavy. Go figure. And there we go. There we go. Well, it doesn't really look the best. I'll have to figure out something on that. Got these clamps sticking out. Looks looks almost like a you know I should be standing here like this or something. Looks like knives that were thrown <laughs> kind of from the camera thing I'm seeing. But <laughs> weird sense of humor. So there we go. Uh, Lord willing, you're going to be seeing more of this. 
and I'm going to be doing some work with my uh, chalk. Where did I put my chalk at? Is it, oh, there it is. Excuse me. Right here, among yo pastels. And uh, it's all very new to me. I, I used to love to draw in high school. I was very much into to drawing and art and things. And I and, uh, just got away from it. And uh, of course, my grandpa was a quite a phenomenal artist. And I think I showed pictures of you know some of his painting in the past, but that he used to do. But there you go, exciting, isn't it? So you know you're not going to get that much variety with markers and stuff. Well, I guess you could, you know, the whiteboards and whatever. But I just I like the 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 shading and everything else of of chalk. So I'm just really excited to get into this and um, ordered just ordered some more black chalk because that's going to be primar primarily what I'm doing but I'm just very anxious to be able to draw out things and and do stuff so very exciting and uh, just wanted to thank everybody who's going over to the GoFundMe thing and and you know giving money towards the new uh, ministry office uh, it's just it's something one of them things that uh, we're never going to be uh, getting into multi millions of dollars or huge big buildings and big mortgages and you know of uh, hundred thousand five not not hundred thousand five hundred thousand a million you know dollar church buildings and whatever else we try to keep things at a lower level at a lower cost and a lot of the stuff you know we just have to try things you know this is all just experimental uh, when I eventually get to you know if this works this way this angle whatever else I don't even know this might change till you actually see the first chalk talk come out um, when I get things done you know I'd, I'd like to eventually of course you know have the thing come in or, or have this in a eventually when we get whatever office is what I'm trying to say this isn't going to be just in this room and you see that part of the roof going down there and whatever whatever and you see clamps I'll make it nicer but I just need to know is this surface I mean, it feels really smooth right now I don't think that there's going to be any lines or anything or holes or whatever else that are going to mess up the chalk talk and so this is going to refine and get better and better as time goes by and our goal is when we have a place where we can you know firmly be set up permanently that's near to our property um, then this is going to look a lot better it's going to be in a bigger room it's going to be nicer looking around it and whatever else and uh, there's a real need out there for Bible-believing materials that can come out and teach people the Word of God. And uh, that's what the Lord's called me to do. And um, so, look forward to seeing this with better lighting. Right now, so you put the white up there and now it's the camera's kind of adjusting to this collar and it's making me look a lot darker. Um, but when I, once I get lighting on it and everything else and... and uh, gonna have to be careful what I wear too if I wear something real dark it's gonna be kind of big contrast there but just thought I'd do something a little bit different today and film actually some of the construction if you will not really much construction but just cutting up a couple boards and sticking the thing up here and really looking forward to doing some chalk talks with this new surface here before I was using uh, just to show you here real quick I think that's in this tote here I was using, um, here, let me get one of them. I was using these uh, sketching pads is what I was using to do some of my messages. And, and I had to just, you know, there's the seven parts of salvation, you know, which worked. I mean, it's okay. I, you know, just, I had these little brass hooks that I hooked onto my bookshelf and I still had it over there and then I would hook this thing onto it then I can draw with my marker and it, it'll illustrates the point you know and whatever and uh, of course I think I do actually have a chalk one of my chalk studies in here um, but you know yeah there it is right there uh, you know I drew with some chalk got a lot of practicing to do but you know that worked but 
this is gonna be a lot nicer a whole lot nicer and uh, so that's gonna be it thank you to everybody out there that's um, given towards the GoFundMe thing and uh, exciting plans for the future exciting stuff coming out uh, got a, another little thing here I have right now um, there they are. I'm not going to show them. Don't want to spoil the surprise, but I have one, two, three, four, five, six uh, sermons to do. And um, again, a lot of people don't realize this. They think, oh, it's just all Denlinger. It's just he lives in the, this isolated thing and nobody gets in contact with him. Um, I would say, let's see here, one, yeah, yeah, two. Two of these six studies were somebody else's idea. Brothers and sisters writing to me all the time and saying, Hey, brother, do you ever think about this? Or do you ever think about that? I was reading the Bible and I believe the Lord showed me this thing and that thing. And that, could you do a sermon on that? Um, that's been a lot of my ministry. I am not isolated. I am not, I don't want to hear anybody else's opinions or whatever else. That's not true. Not true at all. Uh, that is a blatant lie. A lot of what I do is the body of Christ coming out and saying, hey, brother, what do you think about this or what do you think about that? And I thank the Lord for my friends out there in the ministry, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, you've really inspired me to keep pushing forward. It's been rough at times. It's been very rough at times. But my brothers and sisters out there that, that are, are you know, going through some of the same things and, and we just we share so much. And yeah, it'd be neat to be all together and, and have some place where we're all living together and, you know, communal type of deal or something. <laughs> Not really, but, you know, you know what I'm saying. It'd be nice to fellowship, okay? But uh, that's what heaven's for, all right? Right now, the Lord has you where you are for a reason. I'm not saying you shouldn't move. If the Lord tells you to move, go someplace else, that's great. But uh, how many Christians do you know in your local town, in your neighborhood, you say, well, not very many yet. Okay, then that's why the Lord has you there. The uh, Lord didn't intend for us to have some kind of a holy physical city here on the earth that you get saved and you got to move to it. you got to make your pilgrimage to the holy city and whatever else and let the rest of the world go to hell. No. Um, God has you where you're at. All right? And, you know, people say, well, it's, I find it ironic, you know. I always think, I understand my enemy's mind, so I know where they go with their thoughts. And they'd say, how ironic that you're saying stay where you are while talking about moving. Yeah, but the thing is, you see, we've been here since uh, 2000, January of 2014 in this place, this one location. So we're coming up to five years at a place that we bought just to be temporary. So, And uh, we've done a lot of work here. And uh, not just online. We've, we've talked to people in the area, uh, you know, whatever. So... That's going to be it. I'm looking forward to using this. So look for it in future videos. Thank you for watching.